Ladies and gentlemen, today is February 8th, 2017, and this is the Kink Kill Show, episode 327, and that still feels weird to say 2017, I can't believe that. But my name is Keenan Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today we're going to be talking about a very important question that everyone has been asking, all of you out there, everybody wants to know this, I get this question all the time on the MZ, and quite frankly, I'm sick of it! So I'm telling you guys today how to join the art industry. 101, the shortcut, the secrets that you need to join the art industry. Yes, I'm going to be revealing all of them. And my first secret is that there is not a secret. In fact, I'm just gonna be telling you about my experience, tell you about some things that have really helped me. And we have a special guest today. Of course, we have Maria, Lady Maria of the Clock Tower from Bloodborne. We're gonna be drawing her today, painting her in the background. And while we are doing that, I'm gonna be going over some notes right here. I've got a, got a big old binder of notes. And I'm going to give you guys a little speech today. I prepared a little speech for y'all. So, and you might be wondering, well, how did you get that awesome sketch of Maria, that beautiful, amazing sketch? Well, I just kind of drew it on a piece of lined paper while I was kind of relaxing. But isn't that interesting? Hmm, I was just kind of, I think I was literally on like a phone call or something, and I was just like sitting there sketching. And I looked at it at the end, and I was like, man, that was a really nice sketch. And it was the very first one that I did. It wasn't like I had any warm-ups or anything. It just like, boom, just like slapped it right out on top of there, or right on right onto the sketchbook, right onto the paper, and then I scanned it in, and I'm like, all right, that looks pretty good. Let's roll with that. So, uh, yeah, today we're going to be having a little bit of a thoughtful. For those of you guys who have been missing the thoughtfuls, I'm going to sneak it into your ear while I... <laughs> I'm going to sneak it into your ear while I paint Maria. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is, uh, well, we already have our sketch here. We already have that laid out. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna set this to multiply and we're gonna darken down our background to sort of this gray. This gray, and I'm in a great mood today, guys. I'm in a very good mood because, okay, a uh, little side story before we jump into the whole, like, joining the art industry. I know you showed up and you want me to get right to it. You want me to freaking shut up and just tell you what you need to know. And we'll get there, we'll get there, don't worry. But uh, in the meantime, I want to tell you guys about my day. Let me tell you about my day and why it's been awesome. And that is because I've been living in Utah for probably about five years. And up until now, I've never been up to the mountain to go snowboarding, even though I personally like it. I mean, I'm not like a pro or anything, but in fact, I really suck. And uh, my friend Josh, who is with me today, could definitely attest to that. Uh, he saw me. I did a front flip, but that was not a controlled front flip. It was more so catching... I, I rode into this giant, like, mass of powdered snow, and then the front of my board caught into it, and it sent the rest of my body flying forward. And I did this awesome front flip, and uh, it was very impressive, up until the point where I fell down and landed on my head. But, uh, yeah, up until that point, it looked really cool. Um, so, yeah, and uh, so that's why I'm in a good mood today, because I've taken time to relax. I've taken time to ask myself, hey, what is it that I need to be happy? What is it that I need to be happy and to be on point and make sure that the best parts of me are coming out, right? The best parts of me are coming out when I'm doing my show, when I'm doing my art, you know, all that stuff. When I'm working the new job, it's like you got to make sure that you have break time and you got to make sure that there's balance in your life, okay? Now, okay, now that we got that out of the way, now that we talked about taking care of yourself, you might be asking, Keenan, why are you talking about this? Why are you telling me about your snowboarding day? You're making me jealous. I wish I could go up to the mountain and do that stuff. Man, I wish you would just tell me what I need to know, and let's go ahead and get into that then, okay? Because I'm sure you guys are already sick of this. You're already sick of hearing me talk about my story. Let's get into the secrets, okay? So the secrets. Um, so let's begin with the first bullet point here, and that is the beginning. The beginning, guys. I know that you guys, uh, many of you guys and gals out there, you want to become artists and you want to become professional, right? But what is professional? What does that mean? Well, there's so many different types of professional artists and there's so many different uh, varied styles and things that you can do with your art and different crowds that you can entertain and uh, bring happiness and joy to and pleasure and all those good, good emotions. You can bring all those things to your audience okay now you got to figure out what kind of artist you want to be right but the first thing that you want to do before you get into any of that before you get into any of that is you got to ask yourself you got to say is this something that i love is this something that's going to be a hobby 
or is this just, or, or is this something that's going to be a hobby, or is this going to be a ritual? Is this going to become a part of the rest of my life? Because think about this. I really want you to think about this. I'm gonna switch to this for a second because you gotta see my face when I talk about this. You have to see the unshaven face and you have to ask yourself, Kina, why are you not shaving your face? Kina, why are, why do you have your priorities so messed up and, 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 and why do you look like a hobo, right? And the reason is because drawing and artwork has become such a main part of my life at, is, I don't even know if this is a good example. It's like the things that I do, I love so much. I push the things that I don't enjoy doing, such as shaving and sometimes showering, right? I try to, well, I try to shower every like other day at least, but some days I go quite a while without taking it. And I actually do look, look like a hobo. But the point is, is that you need to realize that your passion, your passion is an all consuming thing that takes you back to the title screen and that is okay. And that is the point where you realize that, hey, you know what? I think art is meant to be a lifestyle. I think it's meant to be a ritual for me. And it's not just a hobby because it's the thing that I think about all the time. It's the one thing that is always on my mind. When I'm in school, when I'm in class, I'm not paying attention to what the teacher is saying because I don't care, right? <laughs> well, not necessarily, but like you're always like for me it was always thinking about the next thing i was going to draw and sure enough it hasn't stopped there isn't a day that goes by where i am not thinking about something that i'm going to create something that i'm going to paint um and that's the way that you guys have to be it, or that's something that you got to be looking for if it's going to be a passion if it's going to be a true passion a true passion and um and uh what's the word True passion and uh, a ritual, right? Because a lot of people talk about like, oh yeah, I really wanna be an artist. And it's like, well, why? Why do you wanna do that? Oh, because I just I just really like it. I like looking at it. And uh, yeah, if I could like draw it too, that'd be really cool. And they kind of get into it, but it's kind of something that they pick up and they put down and this and that. And then, you know, if, if it's that, if that sounds like you, you're the kind of person that just kind of picks it up for a little bit and then they start thinking about something else and like, oh, maybe I don't wanna do this for the rest of my life. Maybe, maybe I want to be a doctor. Maybe I want to be a professional snowboarder. You know, I don't fall face first and do front flips in the snow like Keenan does and land on your butt, which uh, really hurts, by the way. In fact, my girlfriend really suggested that I, okay, don't laugh. Don't laugh. My girlfriend suggested that I get a butt pad, okay? It's a thing that you literally strap on and it pads your butt so when you fall, it doesn't hurt. And yeah, let's say it literally saved my butt today. Literally saved my butt, okay? But see, okay, um, so a good, that's, oh man, that's a really good example. Okay, so see how snowboarding, right? Snowboarding is something that not only do I suck at, but I let it go for years. I let it go for years because I picked it up and I was like, yeah, this is kind of cool. Yeah, I watch movies about snowboarding. Yeah, I, like, I really love to watch like, like really like pro snowboarders and just the things that they can do and like the amount of control that they must have to be able to do the tricks and stuff like that. I would love to be able to show off to my friends. I would love to be able to like show off and be cool, right? And then maybe people would like me, right? And uh, and that was like kind of my original thing that kind of got me into it, right? I was like, oh yeah, it seems cool and I could like show off and do tricks. And you know, I remember I took up skateboarding for a little while too because, and I'm totally just kind of winging this. I'm not really, like I'm just kind of trying to figure this out. Get some general colors in there right now for Maria. Um, but yeah, overall, I don't know exactly what this is gonna turn out being. Again, we're just kind of going with the flow. Going with the flow. So, flow with me, people. Flow with me as we continue with this. Okay, but yeah, see how, like, it, snowboarding, it wasn't that thing that I got up in the morning and that was all that I thought about. It wasn't the thing, I went to the mountain and all I could think about was the next day I could go back. Or, or working hard at my job at the mall, right? Or working at McDonald's so that I could save up, you know, cause snowboarding is like really expensive to go up to the mountain, like for multiple times. Uh, unless, I mean, even just getting like a season pass is like super crazy, but see how like that wasn't on my mind. I wasn't working hard to, to get better at that. I wasn't pushing I wasn't thinking about it constantly. That means that that's a good chance that that's just meant to be a hobby. And now let me move on to the next point is that there's nothing wrong with it just being a hobby. There's nothing wrong with you just wanting to be a hobbyist artist. No one's gonna look down on you. I'm not gonna look down on you. I don't mind. Like do art, do art for what it, it serves you, right? For what it serves to you. 
and um, let it serve its purpose, you know, because people think about, oh man, well, you're not serious, right? Oh, you're just a hobbyist or you're an amateur. You're an amateur, right? And I feel like that, that, that term gets tossed around as though it was a bad thing. And it's not at all. Being an amateur is not, nothing to be ashamed of. And I mean, because being an amateur, it's something that it's just what you want to do, right? A good example is me playing guitar. Okay. Another thing, me playing guitar. I don't have my amp anymore because I took it to this place that I was supposed to repair it like two months ago and they haven't done crap to it. So I haven't been able to play guitar. Uh, but see that again, that's in the back of my mind. I don't care about that. You know, it's like, that's just my hobby. Not that big on it. But anyway, guitar playing another, I'm just an amateur and that's all I've ever planned to be. But that's because I just enjoy playing in my room. I enjoy just playing along to music and songs that I like. I don't want to like necessarily play professionally or compose music necessarily. I do have a big passion for music. I do like that stuff, but I know that my true thing, again, I say this many times because I feel like a lot of people get hung up on this point. A lot of people get hung up on the beginning and that is figuring out whether or not you even want to be an artist whether or not you want to be an artist and take it seriously or whether you even have the capacity to take it seriously. Okay. Cause I feel like a lot of people set themselves up for failure, uh, by getting into something that they are just kind of eh about, they're just kind of like the, their friends do it and they're, they like what their friends do and they kind of want to join them and this, this and that, you know, it's like those are not the best reasons. Those are not the best reasons. You gotta do it for yourself. You gotta do it for yourself because eventually you're gonna be all alone, okay? And we're gonna get into that in just a second. Okay, so now that we have sufficiently laid out some masks on Maria, this is feeling quite good. Let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. And that is uh, the drive. Okay, so let's say that you do wanna be an artist. Let's say that you, do, you are one of those people that wakes up and you think about the next piece that you're gonna draw and that's all you can think about. Um, now you got to talk about drive. Okay. Now, a lot of people question this or they're, they're curious about it because they hear the word drive and they think about, let's see, how do I actually want to do this? Do I want to go? Yeah. I kind of want to just start lighting it. I want to start lighting it. Sure. Why the heck not? Why the heck not? Let's just get straight to lighting people straight to lighting. Okay. So for this, I think what I want to do is I want to have like a harsh, upper light yeah let's have a harsh like upper light like up here yeah that could be really cool um but a lot of people and this is probably gonna get really hard i've never actually given a talk and like drawn something at the same time so i forgot uh, yeah. forgive me if i get a little tongue-tied as i just did right there but uh yeah we got to talk about drive so where does that come from a lot of people talk about art block or they they start doing something but then the their motivation just peters out. It just peters out and then they don't have any more willpower. They don't have any more motivation. And they come to me and they ask, Kenan, how do you keep your motivation? How do you keep going when the going gets rough, right? And you know what I say to those people? I tell them, Mr. or Mrs. Artist in the making, what the heck are you doing here? Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you wanting to become an artist? In other words, you know, a more delicate way to say it is, what are your reasons? What are your reasons for wanting to become an artist? Why do you want to do this stuff? Do you want to be able to, and here's the point, and this is a really fun exercise to do, very fun exercise to do, because you gotta ask yourself some very important questions. Very, very personal questions that you might feel a little uncomfortable asking yourself. Uh, and even more uncomfortable admitting to other people, oh man. Uh, but don't worry because these questions you ask in the privacy of your own journal, right? If you have a journal, if not, then you should definitely go get one. Uh, you ask them in the privacy of your own house, your own, whatever thing you're going to write them in. And you're going to ask yourself a couple big questions. And that is why, what are my reasons for wanting to do this? Why do I want to pursue a career in art and become a professional? Why do I want to join the industry? I love how we call it like the industry, right? Because it's like, it's like made up to be like this big thing. And actually it is, it is a big thing to get into. But once you've been there, once you've been there, it's almost like climbing a mountain. It's climbing a mountain. The first time you look at it, someone who's never done it before, it's the most daunting thing in the world. And it is very scary and it's hard. It's hard to climb. It's hard to hike it, 
right? But once you've done it the first time, after that, it's not it's not scary at all. You look back on it and you're like, oh, that was all that it was? It actually wasn't too bad. Man, I got lucky at a couple points, but man, overall, I feel like I was in the right place at the right time. I feel like I had some good, I felt like I had the right reasons to keep me going, okay? Now, let's get into that. Let's get into reasons and values and some things that you need to ask yourself. Now, I have a complete list of values. There's a complete list of values that I always like to reference uh, as I'm, or when I talk about this. Um, but in general, let me throw out some of the most important, or probably some of the most common ones that some people are afraid to admit, okay? Now, the first one is money, money. Do you want to get into the art industry and do you want to have a career? That way you can get paid well for what you do. What? Oh my gosh. You of all people want to get paid money because you have a skill that no one else has and you want to get paid well for it? You are so greedy. You are so selfish. That is a bad thing, right? See, this is what people are going to tell you. This is what, this is what not even necessarily what people are going to tell you, but what the world has told you that money is bad and pursuing money is bad. And if you do something, if you get a job or you go to college and, and you want to become a doctor because they make a lot of money, that's bad on you. Okay. Now, again, everything must be in perspective and uh, balanced, right? Because I do agree. Sometimes people do get into careers just because, just because, oh, my uh, grandfather did this, or my mom did this, or my family business is doing this, and they really want me to take it over, and uh, yeah, uh, I can make a lot of money doing it. Now, that is not necessarily bad. However, it goes back to it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. About Do you remember how I told you that your drive and your motivation will wear out. Your your motivation is not enough unless you have the reasons they're going to keep you going. They're, they need to be there that way eventually when you hit the end of your willpower, right? Okay, so that's that's what it is. Most people are trying to go off of willpower to get to where they want to go. However, willpower always is going to fail you sooner or later because eventually you're just going to get bored. Eventually you're going to get tired. And you're not going to want to do it anymore. And then at that point, you're really screwed because you're, you're kind of stuck for the time being, right? I, I don't, well, I don't like to say you're stuck, but um, in general, like you can be a little screwed for the time being because you, now you have to ask yourself those questions all over again. If you're like, well, if this wasn't it, if this wasn't what I wanted to do, then what is? What is the thing that I wanted to do? And then you have to go through and heaven forbid, by this point, you haven't figured out, oh, well, maybe I should be doing something that I actually like. Maybe I should be doing something that I can actually get up in the morning and be excited about or be thinking about, right? Because there will be days. I mean, even when you get the passion job or you're doing something out of passion, there are going to be tough days too. Don't get me wrong. Um, but imagine this. It's like you got to get up and now you're forced to go to a job where you're doing something that you're good at versus going to a job that you just can't stand, right? Which one are you going to pick? So... Let's go ahead and move on to the next part. And this Maria is looking pretty good, pretty good. I'm just laying in a couple colors that we can play around with as we go through this. And again, I like the fact that I'm talking and, and drawing at the same time because it's allowing me to, I'm focusing so hard on what I'm trying to say that there's no choice left to my hand other than to kind of trust in itself. And this might turn out good. This might turn out good and it might turn out like crap. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, but promise you guys that I like doing more live stuff with you guys too because I really like you guys to see my my process and if I can give you some words of advice or a little bit of uh, motivation along the way and then hey that's a win-win for everybody okay so let's talk about um, oh yeah other values other values that a lot of people tend to feel bad about admitting right they feel bad admitting that they want those things another one is fame do you want to be famous because of what you do do you want people to like you? Do you want to have a lot of friends? <laughs> Again, it's like, well, when you say it that way, it's not, it's not, it doesn't sound as selfish. It's like, yeah, I just want people to like me. I just, I want to be, I want, I want to be somebody that people think is cool, right? As I'm literally stumbling over my words and I'm trying to get this hat looking right. But uh, yeah, there's no shame in that. And I'll tell you, first and foremost, I love putting myself as the main example. 
I started the Can Kale Show because I wanted to get better at talking. I wanted to get better at speaking. And you could tell I need a lot of help. But the reason I did it is because I really admired people that could speak very well. I admired people that could speak very confidently, specifically in front of crowds. Like I really admired actors and, and voice actors and uh, just people, anybody who could get in front of a crowd and say what needed to be said. And people who could motivate people, people who could um, change people's uh, view of the world, give them uh, just a little bit of information that might lead to them kind of doing a little bit of research on their own and maybe making a change, right? Because I like to say it this way. It's like nobody can like talk you into being motivated. Nobody can like motivation, like motivational speaker is kind of like a weird thing to me because nobody can actually say something that's really going to make you do anything. Um, but they can give you ideas. But the real change is going to happen when you get sufficiently either pissed off or uh, actually, yeah, usually it has to do with you getting pissed off. Um, <laughs> yeah, you get sufficiently disgusted. There's a nice way of saying it. Uh, that you decide that you're going to make a change for yourself. Um, and that's what I really believe that true change comes from. Not from somebody saying, you can do it, right? I did it. Look at me, right? Look at me. Now you can go out there and do it yourself. And then you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, this guy is such an idiot that if he can do it, I can do it too. Actually, that does happen sometimes. Sometimes you do see people that are actually like really good at what they do or actually like really successful at what they're doing. And, but you look at their skill and you look at what they're doing and they're like, oh, they're actually not that good. I think I could do a better job if I just kind of did this for maybe a few years or even just like kind of got into it for a few months. Uh, and sometimes that's very motivational. So it kind of goes both ways. But in general, nobody can say anything that's really going to make you do anything. So I hope that you understand that. Take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt because uh, or, or approach it cautiously. Approach it cautiously because you gotta understand that I'm speaking from my own experience and your mileage may vary. No, I, <laughs> I hate to say it that way. <laughs> Let's see, what's a more eloquent way to put it? Ooh, that actually looks really nice. Ooh, man, forget what I was saying. Man, I am a pro. You should totally trust everything I'm saying. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that color. It looks really nice. Uh, I'm really trying to punch up the uh, the the whites, I was gonna say the whites, but the, the lights, the light part of the skin. I was trying to add some interesting colors in there. She's got very, very like pale skin, so I really want to try to capture that. Yeah, that's good, that's a good start. Let's go ahead and put a little subsurface in there. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Okay, now for the hair. Let's go ahead and push the hair a little bit more bluish. Let's go ahead and get get started on the next part. And that is, oh yeah. So ask yourself what you really want. And I say fame and fortune because of course that's what everybody wants, right? Everybody wants that type of stuff, at least in some degree. And I want you guys to be okay with admitting that to yourself. I want you to be okay with saying, yes, I want people to like me. I want people to think I'm cool. Yeah, I want a lot of money. I want to be able to be free. I want to be able to do what I want. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with pursuing the skills that can get you there. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next part. And that is, uh, let's see here, the fall. Okay, so you've got the drive. You're ready to get out there and you're ready to make stuff happen and you're drawn every day, you're waking up, you're getting, you're just getting inspired and you're drawing pictures of your favorite games, you're drawing fan art, you're posting it in places where people can see it, right? So you're getting exposure. A lot of people talk about, Keenan, how do I, how do I get a job at Blizzard Entertainment? Well, do the people at Blizzard Entertainment know you exist? Well, no, I haven't really posted anything on the forums or like the Blizzard Reddit or Overwatch Reddit. Okay, then how the heck, how the heck are, are they gonna come find you? How the heck are they gonna call you if they don't have your contact information, if you don't have a site, if you don't have any of that stuff? It's like they can't just come kick down your door and say, hey, you should join our team over here of amazing artists that you can learn from and gain a bunch of brand new knowledge over years and then you know we're gonna pay you really well and you can be cool and people will like you and you know it's like that stuff isn't gonna happen 
It's not gonna happen. And I'm so sick of people thinking that's what's gonna happen because they went to this, you know, little school and it's like really prestigious and, you know, oh, I heard Pixar hires out of here. Or people, you know, uh, internship, a lot of internships come out of here. Yeah, this sounds like a good place. It's like, yes, that can happen, but you can't bank on that. Don't bank on just the school. Don't bank, here's what I've learned. The number one rule is don't bank on somebody else trying to pursue your dreams for you. Or don't think that somebody else is gonna have more interest in you getting what you want than yourself. Because that's just the awful truth of the world. And it's not really awful, it's just like, that's just plain and simple. Don't think that somebody else really has your best interest in mind, because they don't. The only person that has that is you. So you got to understand that that's what you gotta do. And I know that we're getting into some real talk today, and I really like this. I love getting into real talk. Because today, you know what I you know what I did? I came back from snowboarding and I looked at myself. I looked at myself. I took and my glasses were off because I was wearing my my contacts, right? So the glasses are off today. These make me look more amicable and friendly and happy, but the glasses were off. And I looked at myself and I'm like, I look like a concerned parent. I look like a concerned father. And I need to tell my students out there exactly how the world actually works, at least in my experience so far, right? Uh, specifically the art industry and the art world. And people are always asking so many questions about it that I felt like I need to be that concerned father and, and give a talk, right? Give a talk today and paint Maria. So, um, yeah. So the fall, let's talk about the fall. Let's talk about the moment where you consider giving up. Or another thing that I like to call the fall is the dark moment alone. Now, do you remember earlier in the talk where I was talking about there's eventually going to come a point where you are all alone. You're all alone. Nobody believes in you. People, a lot of people hate you. No, well, people don't necessarily hate you, but you're stuck, okay? You're stuck all alone. And you feel that it's hopeless. You feel that you really screwed up. And it's time to throw in the towel. And it's time to give up, okay? Now, this is a very, very important point because when you reach this point, right, it's usually gonna come after you had a couple, for me, it was after I had a few, like kind of small time local jobs in the area. And, um, and I was just starting to like submit my portfolio to, hang on. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I went to eat right before this, so <laughs> I had to mute myself. Oh, man. <laughs> As I'm talking, I'm like freaking like burping. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> That's why I'm glad I got this button right here. This is awesome. It's the sneeze, burp, all kinds of other body noises button. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, I got a bunch of jobs, just local stuff, doing learning from um, people in the industry, right? Learning from my coworkers, learning to work with the team for the first time in my life, uh, getting feedback for the first time in my life, having somebody look at your art and say, I don't like it. Say, uh, how about we try something like this? Or, and then the feeling, the sting of that, feeling the sting of being rejected, right? You put your heart and soul into something and it wasn't good enough. Right? That's a tough place to be, but it's something that you got to learn. Something that you got to learn and something that you will learn in time is not that big of a deal. Okay? Uh, but let's talk about the fall. Okay, so the fall occurs when I really want the shadows to be blue. I want the shadows to be super blue in this piece like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Getting some blue in there. That's what we Ah. Okay, but the fall happens when you think that everything's going good and then everything just goes belly up. Everything goes belly up. Your boss calls you and says, hey, we can't pay you. The job you had is now gone. Either you've been fired or the, you know, the company's going under, they can't afford to pay you and you're screwed, okay? Now at this point, it's very important that you understand what's gonna happen here because that means that you're just about to break through. It's gonna take a little bit longer, right? It's gonna take maybe a few more months, but during this time, 
you are going to discover a part of yourself that you have never found before. You're going to discover a part of yourself that basically you're going to find out who you are. You're going to find out how you handle pressure and you're going to find out how you handle really, really crappy things happening to you because you're going to be stuck at home wondering whether you should feed the cat or feed yourself. And of course, we all know what the proper answer is. Yes, you kill the cat and eat it. No. No, so that was a that was just a stupid joke. That was so dumb. Oh my gosh. That was so dumb. I am, so, I am sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. That was really not funny. Wow, that was dumb. Okay. Uh, but no, seriously, like you're going to be coming to a point where, uh, yeah, things are going to be tough. You're not going to be able to pay the rent. Your friend's going to have to cover your butt for you for a little while. And that's going to strain on your friendship. You're going to be wondering what the heck you're doing. You're going to feel like everything up till this point of your life has been a lie and that you suck and that you just wasted all this time and that, you know, it's finally time to turn it in and call it quits, right? But I really like this point. I really like this point because it's the point where you really begin to find out what you're made of. You get to find out what you're made of because up until this point, it seems like things have been, you know, eh, kind of okay, kind of all right. I feel like things have always been good. You look at the world and everybody's been telling you, yeah, things are tough, but if you just believe in yourself, if you just believe in yourself, you are special. You are special and you were put on this world to bring something magical, right? And there's never been anyone else like you and you're completely unique and a special little snowflake. And then one day you realize that that was a, a terrible lie. That was a terrible lie. And that is, no, I am actually not special. I'm actually subject to the same rules and I'm gonna have to deal with a lot of the same crap and I'm gonna have terrible things to happen Terrible things happen to me in my life. And you know what I have to do? I have to figure out how the heck this line appeared. What? Where did that come from? I have to figure out how I'm gonna deal with it, okay? I have to figure out how the heck I'm gonna deal with it. Am I going to turn inward? Am I going to do a little soul searching? Am I gonna read a book? That's what I did. I read a book called The Alchemist. And I had read it before, so I kind of knew the story. I knew it was very inspiring and it inspired me to do many things in my life, make many changes in my life. And I highly recommend it. So if you're feeling good, if you're wondering about books. Oh, speaking of books, oh shoot. That is a total question from the catapults. All right, you guys know how that goes. Okay, cool. So this one's coming in from reading, reading material. This is a good one. Um, they're talking about artistic stuff. Really good book I really liked a lot is eventually you're gonna have to learn Perspective. And I would highly recommend Perspective for Comic Artists by David Chelsea. That'll help you a lot to understand like how that stuff works, horizon lines, vanishing points. A lot of stuff that I did in the Diva piece really helped out to read that book. But in terms of other reading materials, Pridding, I would highly recommend The Alchemist because it is a beautiful, it's a beautiful tale about a boy um, trying to find his, or he's seeking treasure, he's seeking treasure, right? He's seeking fortune, right? Which many of you have up till this point thought was wrong. But this story is all about that. This guy wakes up and he's like, he, he says to himself, I've had a dream that I can be rich, that I can be free and do whatever the heck I want. And that is something that I can get excited about. And that's something that I am going to go in search of. So he does that. And that's the story. I mean, it's much cooler than that. You definitely got to check it out because he goes through a lot of similar things. He goes through hardships. He goes through trials and he goes through points where he thinks about giving it up. And uh, it's just a very beautiful book. Very, very beautiful book. So something that I really want to do with this piece is I want to try to kick up the materials as much as possible. So I've noticed up until now that my materials, I tend to kind of keep them all the same shininess. Like the leather is kind of shiny. 
the metals are kind of shiny, the skin is kind of shiny, and I'm gonna try my best to really differentiate my materials on this one. And I don't know how long we've been going for. How long have we been going for? I have no idea, but whatever, we're gonna continue. It feels like we've been going for maybe about 30 minutes. I'm actually thinking about doing this in two parts. I think I'm gonna do this in two parts. Yeah, uh, because yeah, we're going through the dark moment alone. So let me finish up with this and then we'll go into part two. Part two. And yes, this is gonna be released in the same day because I'm awesome. You guys are awesome and you deserve that. So let's go ahead and uh, finish up with the fall. So the fall is the point where everything kind of cuts loose. Everything sucks and you consider throwing in the towel. And uh, at that point, you gotta find yourself, you got to figure out how you're gonna make things work. And uh, once you do, once you do, you are going to be given a chance. You are going to, right at the point where everybody else would have given up, right? A lot of people like to say this, and I know it sounds cheesy, but, cause it's like, oh, well, how do I know like, when the point when everybody else was gonna give up? You know, it's like, that's just kind of a, a matter, like a, like a saying, right? But you'll know, you'll know, because you're gonna look back and be like, oh man, I was so close to giving up. I was so close to giving up. And that's why you gotta hang on. You gotta hang on to that dream. And you gotta keep refining, right? You gotta keep refining. You gotta keep refining your skill. You gotta keep putting yourself out there. You gotta keep hearing the negative comments. You gotta keep hearing the good ones too, right? And you gotta keep building, 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 building. Because eventually, you are going to come to the point, which I call the crest the crest of the hill where you've reached the top. And then there is going to be a little bit of a downhill. There's gonna be a downhill before you come to the mega hike. The mountain is now, right, up until this point, you've been climbing a hill, you've been climbing a hill, but you couldn't even see over the hill to see the mountain that you're about to have to hike up, right? And we're gonna to get to that in part two. So you guys stay put, and I'll see you guys in a moment. Stay put, people. Stay put.